I want to talk about how you or what you can do and how you can show up to play your role or embrace your role as being the healer and the one who is going to bring forward new earth or manifest new earth because we're here we're light workers and we came here to alchemize this density we came here to usher in an entirely new reality and it is so so exciting to be here at this time to do it but we're going to run across in your journey uh those who are really entrenched in limiting beliefs really keeping themselves small, keeping themselves unaware, unconscious, have not yet awakened and exhibit a lot of anxiety. Like I said, a lot of fear, a lot of distrust, uh, a lot of these dense emotions, disempowered, giving their power away. And uh, that's the reality that many are comfortable in because that's all that they've known. So you, have an amazing ability because you are awake. You have reconnected with higher aspects of you. You remembered that you are a being of light, a limitless being of light, an energetic being. And th with that comes great power to shift the paradigm, the old way of existing, the old way of being, the old earth. These are lower frequency timelines. So we all have higher frequency timelines within us that we have access to. You have access to these. Now, when we're focused into a lower or a more dense reality, a lower frequency reality, we're just simply turned away from those. They're not on our radar at that particular moment. So it's important to remember that you are multidimensional. And when you can get present and you could get centered, you have the ability at that moment to start to open up and perceive higher frequency timelines. Essentially what happens is you are this column of light, right? Coming down and manifesting as this, as this physical vessel and this column of light um, can change the reality that you are experiencing. So when you draw in or attract more of your light, the field in which you experience or view reality shifts. It starts to match that higher frequency of light that you're bringing in. So when you're experiencing or interacting with others and they're turned away, from the truth of who they are, that they're, they're light beings, they're multidimensional beings. They just see themselves as in the physical, disempowered, victim mentality, anxiety, fear, stress, all of these types of low density emotions. They essentially perceive or they're living in a reality that they're cut off from the truth of who they are. Okay. So we have the power to remind them that the reality that they are experiencing is a reality that they're choosing to experience on an unconscious level, okay? So how do we best do that, right? Because, you know, I've engaged with people. Have you guys had situations where, you know, maybe it's at work, you go to work and there's people there that are just low vibe. They're, they always have a problem for every solution. They're anxious. They're worried about what's going on in the world. Um, they're trying to protect, pro uh, protect their, their identity, right? They have these beliefs about themselves, they have these beliefs about reality, and they're very defensive when anybody challenges them. So we go down that path and we take the bait and we get into like, you know, an argument or a back and forth with that. And um, we end up lowering our, our, our frequency drops, right? Our vibration slows. And we tend to match that, okay? So verbally, we're dropping ourselves down to, to match the situation, right? So the person that you're interacting with that maybe stressed or anxious is opening the doorway and giving you a choice saying, hey, come down and match me, right? And then we choose if we're not on the ball, we're not present, we will, we will unconsciously say, okay. And then we just, we drop, right? So we end up then experiencing a match to a reality that they're living in. Now, maybe temporary because you get away from the situation. Maybe you go home from work. You've had some arguments with some coworkers. You go home and you start breathing and you're like, oh, you start to rise again. Okay, you get out of that, right? But in that moment, you drop down and matched and that became your reality. You were trying to defend or protect these limiting beliefs or false beliefs that you had about the world and about you. Okay, so you were brought right back down to where the other person is. So 
that's very common in society. That's very common in the collective. Um, the powers that be like to keep people divided so that they can constantly get into this frequency of trying to prove that they're right, the other person's wrong, and protect these identities, okay? So that's that's the reality that we were born into that is now starting to change because you have awakened, you realize that this reality is a reflection of your beliefs, right? So if your beliefs are limited, you have limiting beliefs about yourself and about the world, that's what you're gonna experience. If you awaken and you realize you're this being of light, okay, there's dense energy, you're an energetic being, and there's energy within your body that is a little denser, that can reflect out so that we can become aware of it, and you work through that, and you start to ground more of your higher self, more of your light, your reality starts to shift, it starts to manifest as a higher frequency timeline. Okay, so that's that's what happens. Now, when you're interacting with people, and you guys are going to run across this a lot this year, especially here in the U.S., because it's an election year, you know, even if you're not in the U.S., there's a lot of conflict around the world, there's a lot going on, there's just like, it seems like everybody's fighting, or at least that's what's portrayed, right? So it makes it seem like that the world's very dark right now, okay? But, you know, we've been on this ascension timeline for a long, long time now, and light has been entering this system. That light is you. You have been grounding it into your body, grounding it into the planet. Star seeds are coming down. These are very high dimensional, high, high frequency beings that are coming in. And many of you can classify yourself or consider yourself light workers and star seeds, meaning that you are opening up and awakening to the fact that you are an energetic, limitless being. Okay, so you start to remember that. Okay. And the more that you live in that energy, the more your reality starts to reflect it. So we start to be able to observe these other situations a little bit differently from an uh, observational perspective instead of dropping ourselves down to match. Okay, so we don't take the bait. You don't dive in and start protecting some limiting belief about a reality that really doesn't exist, right? You're on a higher timeline now. You're on a higher frequency timeline. You've connected with aspects of yourself that um, now see these lower frequently frequency timelines as just an expression or a manifestation of dense energy. Okay, so that leads to the topic of this discussion, which is the power. How do you utilize the this immense power that you have to heal the world, to assist and play your part, play your role? in manifesting new earth. And it starts with you and it starts with your interactions with yourself and your interactions with other people. So by interactions with yourself, we go through shadow work. Maybe you've gone through dark night of the soul, right? In order to ground more of our light, we awaken to who we are. We ground more of our light. We need to create space within the body meaning all this trauma and this dense energy needs to be reflected out into reality so that it can be seen. The unconscious, unseen, becomes seen. And that's all that's happening. This is energy that's been keeping us anchored to lower frequency timelines that our higher self is now saying, hey, let's address this. Let's feel, let's feel into this. Let's finally process this so that we can raise its vibration. Okay, so you start to go through these situations that feel a little heavy right? Sometimes they feel very heavy. A lot of anxiety comes up. A lot of stress comes up, right? We're, we're not, we're concerned about the future. We can't see how things are going to end up okay. We're hearing a lot of noise. We're buying into it. We're believing it, right? This brings up anxiety. This brings up stress. And these expectations of the world and the future are based on what we've experienced in the past. So your higher self is saying to you, okay, let's look back at some of this, this energy that we've experienced in the past, but haven't fully processed. So we start to go through this healing journey, right? You guys have watched a lot of my videos, a lot of my videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, and in this group, talk about that. Talk about healing and being present with these energies as they come up. They're just aspects of you, traumatized versions that are coming up to be seen and they want to be loved. Okay, so you're awake now. So you have that perspective. You know 
that when I'm you're feeling anxious, there's something there that is unprocessed that's rising up into your field that's reactivating so that you could sit with it and and calm it, see it, love it. Okay. So the people you're interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis don't have that awareness. Okay, this energy is active in their field and they actually become it. They step right into it. It's like stepping right into another version, out of the light being that you are into the human suffering that feels like this anxiety is who you are or this stress is who you are, this situation is who you are. So you're gonna come across people who, and it maybe it's family members, relatives, right, coworkers, um, those are closest to you. And those are generally the biggest chance you're going to have of, of interacting with people that are unconscious, right? A lot of us who are light workers have family members who are not quite, um, awake yet. Okay. And I know I've had situations where, yeah, I'd like to just let it go and drop down, duke it out a little bit, you know? Um, but the more you ground and anchor into the present moment and into your body, you're going to be able to hold your alignment. So you're going to be bringing in to the situation something new. Okay, so coworkers, relatives, people that are just uh, political. They're, they're, they love political discussions. Uh, political, that's what's going on here now, right? Political, they just love that you're, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. Okay, and they got to defend it. And it's been so fueled by the media that people are really explosive about this stuff now. It's like a, it's like a, there's just like bombs ready to go off when you interact with somebody about, about politics. So there's an opportunity, or you're gonna you're gonna run into those situations. I'm sure you have. I mean, I have. Um, they're out there, sure enough. Okay. Now we could run from that. We could look at that, we could judge that and say, oh boy, humanity's really screwed. <laughs> I mean, look at this. They're fighting over, over, over something, you know, like politics, okay? They're, they're, look at how angry people are getting. Look at how irate they're getting. Look at how uh, some people are getting violent over it, okay? It's like, wow, humanity's screwed. We're done, right? So you think that way, but what's happening is that this energy, this density is just, it's activating in people, okay? And the reason it's activating in people so strongly is because the, the light, the light is here. You are the light, okay? And as people experience your light, that light is going to become a reflection to them of who they are. Now, many people are not ready to embrace that. So that creates fear, it brings up more fear, and that's really just their higher self saying, hey, the light is here, you just need to release this, but they're not quite ready to do that yet, so they get defensive. They shrink, they get stressed, they get anxious, they have to defend their human identity, okay? So you guys are gonna be able to walk into the room if you're centered and you're aligned. Radiate your light, not by saying a word, by being that high frequency you, that in and of itself could trigger a lot of people. But that trigger is a necessity in that moment for people to have an opportunity to awaken. So they're seeing the light being that you are, which is a reflection of who they are. They're just choosing on an unconscious level, egoically, to not acknowledge that in that moment. The protective personality is throwing up these emotions, these triggers to protect them, okay? This is who you are. Let's stay here, okay? Now, when we drop and we go in and try to reason with them, that just gets stronger. That doesn't work. If you guys experience that, I mean, it happens to me a lot. The best thing you can do is maintain your alignment, maintain your center, maintain your state of presence, stay connected to your light, calm, anchored, peaceful, loving, compassionate, okay? Because then what happens is the people who may be a little bit fired up and stressed start to notice consciously. These are like, we call this like, we plant seeds. Like, why are they not experiencing this fear, this anxiety that I am? How come that person, how come Mark's not 
exhibiting that. I mean, look, the world is going to blow up. How is he so calm? Right? And we just show them what their light looks like. It's a reminder. Remember, it's there within them. They're just turned away from it. They've got these false identities they have to defend. So, yeah, yeah, you don't need to say a word, and it's not intentional. Triggered people just by being present in their space. Mm -hmm. So more and more people now are awake. We've anchored, so, you guys have anchored so much light, so much light. I just feel the love. And you have this immense power and responsibility within you to not go out and change the world through physical means or force, but to become that shining beacon of light. It's that lighthouse in the storm of who you are. You are a being, a light being of love, unconditional love. Okay, so now we're a beacon of light, right? It's like the ship's in the storm, people are frantic, people are panicking, they can't see land, there's fog everywhere, right? We don't go jump in past the fog and, and meet their frequency, right? That doesn't help, okay? We stay present and anchored and radiate that light. We feel it. We Emotionally, we feel it. We stay anchored. We stay present. Your vibration now raises and increases fast. You're at a higher frequency. Maybe they don't see the light right away. They can feel it. Maybe they start to connect to their intuition. You know, maybe they're on that boat and they're like, you know, things look really bad, but I feel like we're heading in the right direction. I feel, I trust that there's, there's some sort of safety out there. There's some sort of sign that things are going to be okay. And then from their perspective, that fog of anger energy starts to lift. It starts to clear. And they start to experience more of your light. It comes through the thick fog. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to say anything. You didn't have to become anybody different than the truth of who you are. You embraced your role. You're a light worker. You are here to bring the light. You are here to become the light for those who are ready to find that light, to reconnect with it. Okay, so there could be a contentious situation and you walk into it. And yeah, you're going to feel like that defensive egoic personality and you want to rise up. Because that situation is a reflection of the energy that you have. These are energies that anchor us to a lower, you know, to earth, to, to, to the denser realities. They're still there. We don't lose any of these aspects of who we are. They're there. The difference is they don't control us. You won't be controlled by this. You may feel a trigger. But because you've been doing breath work, meditating, getting present, building circuitry within your body, maybe you've listened to my breathwork videos, maybe you're in my A New You program, or you've been watching the videos in the Facebook group. Okay, so you've built the circuitry. You've anchored more of your light. It's more present and more stable within your body. Your body now knows how to become that and match that, right? So you, get, you feel a little bit of a trigger, but instead you've created a new habit now, which is to become anchored and centered and present instead of identifying with the trigger. So we become anchored and centered in that moment. Now the other person may expect an old you to show up and drop down and duke it out. But instead they're getting a new you, which is now showing them something new, something different, reminding them, maybe not consciously, but subconsciously, of who they are. Peace, love, stability, joy. It's there, and it stops them in their tracks. They're no longer feeding this energy of trigger that triggered them because they're not getting any feedback from you. They're getting stability. So now their higher self says to them, hey, <laughs> what do you think would happen if we let go of that anxiety 
they're not responding anyways, they're not reacting to you, they're not matching you. But let's let go of that anxiety and let's feel into what they are broadcasting, which is what you're sending out, which is your light. And all of a sudden they start to relax a little bit. So you've showed them a new way of showing up or a new way of being, or what you've done really is you became a circuit breaker and stopped the flow of dense, anxious energy, low vibe energy out into their field, which is who they were becoming. Okay. You didn't say a word. You just created alignment and love within you and you became that and offered that up to them, not through words, but through frequency, through becoming. So your calming presence, loving presence, compassionate presence, oftentimes those people will, those people who are triggered that are suffering, because when they're triggered and they're in this dense mental field, mental energy, they're suffering. Okay, they, they feel very threatened. Okay, so there's a need to protect that identity. It's a false identity. My Pleiadian guide calls that the human condition. You're a human. No, we're beings of light manifesting a body they haven't experienced. Okay, so now they have the opportunity to remember that. They feel it. They feel your calm. They feel your presence. They feel your compassion. They feel your love. And their body responds. All of a sudden, they let go of that density. It starts to let go, and they start to settle and calm a little bit. Can you realize how powerful an impact that can have on another individual who is in their trauma, triggered, threatened, and suffering. Not only how, how, much, how powerful of an effect that could have emotionally, but the kind of an effect that that could have physically in terms of their, their, how their body's working, how their immune system's working, their state of health. When they're like this all the time and all of a sudden, you broadcast a frequency that allows them to go, oh, can you take a moment and realize, let that sink in as to how powerful of a moment that can be without saying a word. I've been there. If you guys have been there, drop it in the comments. Okay? I've experienced that. So the most powerful thing that you can do is show up as a loving being of light, a multidimensional you, a new you. Show up as that. Fully embrace, fully feel that, get connected to your heart space. Breathe it in. Feel it. Become it. Okay, and you could do this. I've worked with people um, through coaching and in a new you who have had problems with family members and things. And one thing that I always tell them is when you know you're heading into a situation where the family member is going to be there, do the work beforehand to get centered, get anchored, get heart centered, get heart centered in that moment before you head into the experience. Okay. Then you're in control. Your ego's not. That changes the whole interaction in the, with the experience. And it works. I've seen it. I've seen it personally. I've seen it with people that I work with. People just like you. Who have been struggling with these relationships. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a partner, a spouse. Maybe it's your child. Struggles. Always struggles. Always fighting. Always arguing. I've seen changes when one person, which is the person that I'm working with, decides to take their power back instead of letting it flow into the situation, become anchored, embodied, heart-centered, and gracefully navigate an experience with a relative that would have been very contentious in the past, very difficult, very, tra very traumatic. Now, sometimes the other person doesn't get it right away. They don't feel it. They don't experience it. They're too much wrapped up in their, their, this active energy, of this dense energy, okay? 
but you hold it. You hold your frequency. That's the opportunity for you to further anchor in and embody your light. When you could stand in the midst of, of someone who's activated in, in a dense energy and you're feeling it because you're going to feel it and stay heart centered in that moment, you are leveling up like nobody's business in that moment. Okay. Powerful, powerful opportunity. We don't go into this looking for results immediately. The most important result, the thing that you can do, the outcome, the big win for you is staying heart centered throughout. The other person may not react or respond to that initially, but that's okay. What you're doing is reminding them they're experiencing your energy. Something's happening internally. Okay. Maybe they're too, they're too triggered in that moment, but you know what? I've had this happen many times too. And with clients I work with, you know, Hey, somebody went home and they called me the next day and asked, I, you know, there was something different about you yesterday. And I'm so, I'm so, so sorry. I, I, I was angry like that, but there, I, I noticed something different about you. Can you tell me about what, what's going on? What, what, what's happening with you? Right? So seeds are being planted. We're bringing the light in and we're offering it up to others. We're not verbally going in and trying to prove to them who you are, or why they should change. That just reinforces their, 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 their ego. It becomes more protective. It's got to protect the, the identity, their, what they know this reality to be. Okay. You let them experience your light and then they start to remember that that's who they are. We just show up as, as us, the real, the new, the true. Okay. So yeah, that's a, Linda, it's a great feeling of freedom. So who's in control when you have that mindset and that ability to center and anchor into love, regardless of whatever, whatever is happening out here, who's in control then? Drop in the comments. I mean, you're in control, right? Not the situation, not the other person, because guess what? When the situation or the other person's in control, you become disempowered, right? Your chakras are not aligned. Your solar plexus is out of whack. Your energy is not flowing. Your energy and focus is going into the situation and not moving through your body. Okay. So the power, and I've had people talk to me in my programs, Mark, my kids just are not getting it. They're not awake. They're just not awake. I've had discussion after discussion. They think I'm crazy. Stop talking to them about the subject. Stop trying to change somebody else's belief through words. It's lower frequency. Okay. Become your truth. Be heart centered, be loving. Just be around them in that frequency. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. That gives others the opportunity to become conscious of the choices that they're making. Do I want to live in fear? Do I want to be anxious? Okay. Do I, it's a choice. You know, I, I mean, people say, well, I, I can't control it. It's a, you know, I don't have a choice over being anxious or not being anxious or being stressed. It just kind of happens. Well, it's a manifestation of energy that's stuck in your body. You have a choice to do something about that. When you're feeling disempowered, you just accept the situation. I'm just anxious. Oh, it came down from my parents. They're, they had anxiety, right? We're accepting, we're accepting a, a disempowering belief. So you're becoming small, right? You have a choice as to how to show up and how to be. So when anxiety manifests, if you have the awareness to say, you know what, I see you, but I don't have to become you. I'm going to focus my consciousness into becoming confident or empowered. And then it goes into the modalities and the tools that we use, right? So 
the people that you're around, that you interact with, again, whether it's at work or relative, kids, parents, whatever it may be, they have that choice. They just forgot. Okay. So when we show up calm, when it seems like the world's burning and we show up aligned and we show up heart-centered, not judging who's doing what to who or to me or to you, but just being present. Those around you will remember that they have a choice too because they're seeing you do it. You're validating that for them. You're showing up in that way. So you continue to work on you. You continue to be the express, your highest expression, love, compassion, light, a remembrance of your multidimensional aspects. And you show up that way each and every day. That's how you change the world and manifest new earth. Okay, if you're watching this video on this training on a recording and you'd like to learn more about a new you, I'm going to drop a link in the comment section for a free 15 minute call with me. Love to get on with you, see where you're stuck, see where you could use some guidance and see if I can help you. Okay, I would love the opportunity to do that. So schedules open, go ahead and schedule something at your convenience. Thank you so much for joining me. I love you all. Have an amazing rest of your weekend weekend, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.